pray, calling on the spirit-filled wisdom of our ancestors in faith. God, we ask that you break open the word of life for us, as Jesus once broke bread for his disciples. Open our hearts to receive your word with faith and understanding. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our text for this All Saints Sunday and for our stewardship season comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, reading excerpts from Eugene Peterson's The Message Translation. If you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He lived a selfless, faithful life and then died a selfless, faithful death and the worst kind of death. Because of that, God lifted him high and honored him far beyond anyone or anything ever so that all created beings in heaven and on earth, even those long ago dead and buried, will bow in worship before this Jesus Christ to the glorious honor of God. Will you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So all week long, as I've been preparing and getting excited for this service, I've been hearing a song in my head by the late sweet baritone soul singer, Bill Withers. No, it's not his famous Lean on Me, though that would be a good one, given the day we have ahead of us. It's his song called Grandma's Hands. I wonder how many of you besides Phil Jones, our resident DJ, know it. It goes, oh, Grandma's hands clapped in church on Sunday morning. Grandma's hands played a tambourine so well. Grandma's hands used to issue out a warning. She'd say, Billy, don't you run so fast. Might fall on a piece of glass. Might be snakes there in that grass. Grandma's hands, all right. His grandma's hand soothed the local, unmed, local unwed mother, used to lift her face and tell, baby grandma understands, put yourself in Jesus' hands. And the lyrics end on this line, fitting for today. But I don't have grandma anymore. If I get to heaven, I'll look for grandma's hands. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I think of my grandma every All Saints Sunday. And until today, I've never thought of our puppet saints' oversized hands in this way as being symbols of a big, warm welcome to the proverbial other side. Yet it fits, right? Heartfelt thanks to our stewardship team for giving us this theme 
uh, for a stewardship season and for today, lend a hand, and to the Spirit for aligning things so beautifully on this All Saints Sunday. In our passage, Paul exhorts that first church in Philippi, and by extension, this first church in Cambridge, to first take stock of how much our communal life means to us, how much spiritual friendships mean to us, and how much Jesus' example means to us. He then exhorts us in a way to lean on each other, to lean into those friendships, to set aside our own needs and always be willing to lend a hand. In other words, and in other translation, he says, go ahead and, quote, let the same mind that was in Christ be in you. He goes on to quote an ancient hymn that carries the message, live selflessly, die selflessly, humble ourselves as Christ did, and we too may be lifted up on the last day such that even the saints of old, those long ago dead and buried, will adore us. I'd like for us to stay with this image of hands and imagine when it is that we first learn what it means to give and receive and share something. Maybe it's when we were toddlers. Those exchanges that likely, likely start with our parents or grandparents or friends. My grandma, Daisy Smith, Grew up poor in Patterson, New Jersey. She worked as a laborer in a silk factory there and then as an aide in nursing homes until she, uh, almost until she died. And yet, she and her strong hands taught me so much. She died when I was just eight, but man, do I remember her love. And when I think about it, I can remember and almost feel her hands on my much smaller body. Before I started preschool, I'd go to her house every Wednesday when my mom worked in a medical office and my dad was home writing his sermons on Wednesdays. She'd care for me. She'd throw me wiffle balls with her hands, turn my little five-foot grounders into balls that she'd say, I hit all the way to China. <laughs> We'd play go fish together. She'd mash potatoes and turn her potato masher into a make-believe stoplight with cut out pieces of green and red and yellow construction paper at the end. My family would then come over and gather at her place around her table for a meal every Wednesday night that would often include others who just needed something to eat. Hands not only connect us when we meet people for the first time, it's through exchanges that involve our caring giving, lending, praying, playing, healing, feeding, hands, that we love and pass down feasts and music and ritual and culture from generation to generation. Of course, hands can be used to harm as well, but Paul is not about that here and his mention of lending hands. Again, he's inviting us to be like Jesus. And let's just ponder that for a moment, not just to be of the same minds, but Jesus' hands and what they did. They touched lepers. They healed. They broke bread and fed. They blessed children. They wiped tears when he wept. They prayed, they bled, they were held out to Thomas. They bid people to follow, and so much more. To be honest, we don't usually go with such embodied metaphors on All Saints Sunday. We usually celebrate the great spiritual cloud of witnesses that surrounds and encourages us even now, yet to remember the hands and bodies of our benevolent spiritual ancestors, those who have died, 
what they have held and carried, what they have handed on. It invites us to honor this day in our relationships with all those we've lost in a more tangible way, I think. Before we show a powerful slideshow of many of our hands, one more quick story that a few of you heard me share at the NAACP panel we co-hosted here in late September. The week before that, I was in a workshop in which we were invited to pair off with someone and face them as we were guided in a meditation. First, we were, imagine, we were asked to imagine that we were ancestors. Saints, if you will, that had already passed on. And that we were sitting across from a descendant who was living 200 years in the future. We were asked to suspend our disbelief around two things, and I know you can guess one of them. First, that humans would still be alive in 200 years from now, despite the climate crisis and everything else. But second, we were asked to imagine that America had finally come through a major, federally embraced and funded process of truth-telling and repair. We all had to dig deep for this. The descendants we were facing wanted to know from us, what was it like way back then in 2022? What decisions did you make? What did you have to give up to be a part of setting those early decades of change and turmoil and backlash? Yes, but that apparently truth-telling liberation in motion. It's a very powerful exercise. But then we switched roles. And the second part of the exercise was next to imagine we were sitting across from a benevolent ancestor from 200 years ago. And we were asked to tell them what we needed from them, what strength, what courage, what stories, what songs, what inspirations, what examples to keep us going in the work today. Mm. Suffice it to say, it was a powerful experience, and it was a gift not unlike our All Saints Sunday tradition and our scripture. It's all a beautiful invitation to see our lives and our choices, even about how we spend our money and give and share and sacrifice of ourselves in a stream of generations and communities handing down care, love, beauty, wisdom, joy, and justice. Yes, we need hands and bodies on the line getting out the vote this week. I know that is on a lot of our hearts right now. And yet even there, how much stronger will our efforts be if we ground our efforts in the work and songs of our ancestors, including women and white leaders and multiracial leaders who marched hand in hand in Seneca Falls, in Selma, to secure rights that are at grave risk of being compromised today. Friends, we need our ancestors now more than ever. We need the dreams of our descendants now more than ever. And we need our precious Lord to take our hands now as ever to see us through the storm and through the night that may be ahead this week. And with that, allow me to introduce a most powerful slideshow that our stewardship team has prepared for us today. Issa Bibbins recorded the soundtrack a few weeks back. It's Precious Lord, Take My Hand, instrumental. If you want to check the words, they're in hymn 470 in your hymn books. As you listen and watch, and it takes a few minutes, 
I invite you to sink in and remember and give thanks for all the hands that have guided you and held you and all of the hands that you have held dear. Give thanks for Jesus' hands, for your grandma's or your grandpa's hands, for your children's hands, for Pauline's hands, as we will do later today, for the hands of whatever saints you are remembering today, and consider your own hands as well, some of which will be pictured here. These are all part of a wondrous, ever-flowing stream of God's self-giving love that flows in and through us from generation to generation. May our precious God take our hands even now. May we all lend our hands willingly and joyfully until at the last when we too meet our ancestors and greet our descendants in a world made whole by love. Amen.